Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here, back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory. And today, as you can see by the title and the thumbnail, we have had a madness happen overnight. So yesterday, it was of course the limited time event for Triple Threat Offline. So I managed to play 17 games, so we're one win away from the 40 tokens, which we'll do today while reading out some comments. But during that stint, I managed to pull the Ruby Dion Waiters, finally. And we got a Diamond Consumers with Pack out of it as well, so we've got that to open up. And of course, during that time, we evoed up the Jeremy Lin. So he's ready to go. We just need to evo him uh, and get him up to that second diamond level, which is very exciting indeed. So we've got a couple of packs. We've got a pack from logging in today as well. And we've got loads of stuff in the auction house as well. So it's going to be a busy one. So let's just jump straight into it. So the limited time event today, one free token after every challenge win, which is pretty good. If you are still grinding the spotlights like I need to, still got the final three to do right here, you're going to get an extra token for doing all of these, which isn't too bad. In some of the earlier spotlights, you can get through quite a few in the two hour slot with this Jeremy Lin set when all of them are like four or five minute quarters, you're not going to get through too many, but it is still a nice little bonus. So we come down to the agenda and you can see we've got an exclamation mark because we have completed the monthly agenda for the gold ink ball win 30 games of triple threat offline. So we have done that nice and easy. And then for the daily one, we've got one domination and two triple threat online, which again, I really don't think are a good idea at all. And then onto the monthly, we are one win away from a bonus 5,000 MT. So for this next win, we're going to get 5k and 40 tokens. Not bad at all. And then I've got two days to win 11 more games of triple threat online. So I really need to remember to do that because we might never see that gold, silver, ink ball again. Like, that is how random these agenda rewards are. I mean, it's the first time I've had balls in my monthly agenda the entire year. So it shows how rare they can be. So, yeah, definitely need to remember to get those 11 games done. So, yeah, haven't played any more of the spotlight challenges for Jeremy Lin. And I'm not going to have any time to today either. So tomorrow's video might be us playing the final game. Uh, I'm not sure yet. It depends if 2K release anything. Um, obviously, they have been doing mo moment challenges at the moment, which I've got to go through today. Uh, we've got all of the moments cards from yesterday, which they released just after I uploaded, which is so typical, uh, or just after I finished recording. And then they've dropped one card today, which is a pink diamond, Chris Middleton. So we've got all of those guys to go through. But in terms of actual a set, we actually haven't had one for quite some time now, since last week. We didn't get any new moments for the week cards this week. So they might drop a promo or like packs or a set this Thursday or Friday. Depending on that will depend on when we get through those Spotlight Jeremy Lin sets. Uh, we come over here again. I searched and tried to get a game in this unlimited one. Uh, not unlimited one. The uh, week, Yeah, it does say unlimited there. But the weekly challenge for six tokens. But sadly could not find an opponent, which is a little bit annoying. So we have some packs. And we've got a diamond pack, which is so cool. So we've got the Triple Threat Award pack. So if we come over to Triple Threat Offline, we were at 382 wins, I believe. Uh, so we played, yeah, 17 games yesterday. And the vault was actually really, really good to us we obviously got the diamond consumers pack we got the ruby dion waiters which was massive and we also got 10 tokens and then i think two or three times it opened up and gave us one token as well so we made quite a lot of tokens yesterday and obviously we're going to make a lot more in the next game but yeah pack wise we did really well so let's see if we can get a new card to add into the squad not that it really matters at this point do we have brandon roy already i have no idea yes we already do so we get one mt for him which is just completely irrelevant um anyway this is the deluxe league award this was for the login reward today see if we can get a silver or an amethyst player out of here and we are going to get a silver and a gold player not bad at all can't complain i think the magic set have a little bit of value i hope so anyway and then we come over to the diamond pack now last time we opened a diamond pack we got the uh air jordan sixes or something like that and they only sold for like 5000 mt so that was really trash let's hope for a diamond contract or a diamond three point shoe and we get a we get a three point shoe uh, that is no we don't get a three point shoe we get a diamond shoe uh, last year this was a three point shoe but it's not this year but it's not a bad shoe it gives the five boosts which is good so let's just go ahead straight away and just take a quick look and see what this sells for so 16,000 right there looking like we might be able to get 15k for it which isn't bad 15k 40k I will take that that is much better than the last one we got and it is about the same price as a uh, diamond contract if you were to pull one of them so 15k from that I will definitely take so thank you very much uh, to triple that offline for that so we'll plonk him up hopefully that sells so the pack's done and then we come over to the auction house as you can see here uh, we're pretty empty this needs to go for 550 I believe 
Uh, and then we've got the two players right there. Let's just take a look quickly at DJ Augustine's price. Oh, I saw the first one at 3K and I was like, oh, that's really good. Uh, but no, it's not. So it looks like 1800 we'll be able to get for him. And then Harrison Barnes won't sell for anything at all. So let's get him up. As you can see, we have spent a little bit of MT because we are under the 1.2 million. And I will show you guys in a second who we've actually bought. So we come down here. So Bernard King, I did try and buy another one of him for 31K, as you can see. But we did get outbid, which is a little bit annoying. But... What can you do? You're going to win every bid uh, that you put on. And then we've got all of these jerseys, which have again sold for 450 NT. I've gone through all of my bronzes and all of my silver jerseys now. So there's only the golds that are left to sell. And they do actually have some decent value. So we should be making some good MT along the way. I mean, we're already making good MT by selling these off. The Bradley Beal heat check card. He actually did sell in the end for 7,000 MT. So that's a big bus, a big bus, a big plus. He sold as a 91 rated heat check card, I believe. Um, so that's pretty cool. And we will actually go ahead and check today to see if anyone else has gone on fire. I think we have Chris Middleton in our squad. And of course, he did drop, uh, well, he dropped 51 last night. So that is why, obviously, he got a moments card today. Uh, but yeah, if we do have him at the heat check level, and if he has gone over 90 rated, he should sell for a little bit at least. So uh, these are going to take a while. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we're coming down to the final few right now. That money is just going up and up and up. We should be at 1.25 mil. Uh, and I was going to say, we did have two big cards up for sale. And sadly, neither of them sold. Mark Price and Bernard King tried to get rid of them both because they were selling for a way higher amount than what I bought them for. So I thought I might as well just sell them for a quick prof profit straight away. But sadly, they did not sell. That's actually really annoying. I did think they would have sold, or at least one of them would have sold um, overnight. But sadly not. So it doesn't matter. We can just keep them in the club. Uh, and again, we'll have to go ahead and look today and see if we can pick up any of the other guys from the Legacy sets because I do want to actually get myself to a position where I can get two Galaxy Opals from the token market. At the moment, we've easily got enough for one. We'd be able to get one and then have a, about 150, M, uh, 150 tokens to spare, I believe. So we need to get another 600 tokens from somewhere. Uh, but obviously, we've got loads of MT, so we can easily buy the players. So again, we're back up to having all four of these guys. Uh, and Bernard King comes in. Is there really only one up for 67k? So this is what I mean. Like, surely I'd be easily able to sell him for like 50k right now. Okay, so maybe not. We bought him for, uh, what did we buy him for? I've got it written down right here. Uh, Bernard King, 37k we paid for him. So I don't really want to sell him for 45. I don't really think that's a good word good amount of MT to spend. Bill Walton, why is there a bit of 100k? You can usually buy this card for like 80k on buy now. So again, he is not one that we're going to be picking up. And as for these two guys right here, Nate Thurman coming in at 60k, definitely don't want to be paying that, but there is one on a bid right here. So we are going to try and get him for 49k. Let's have a look. Okay, we are successful on that. So hopefully we'll be able to add that guy into our squad by tomorrow. And then Maurice Lucas still being price fixed, which is so annoying. I mean, just look at the size of that white bar right there compared to Nate Thurman. Nate Thurman, there is literally four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. There is eight of him up on the auction house. And there is, I don't know, maybe 100 Maurice Lucas is up. And that is ridiculous. So 37,900 looks like the cheapest. And this guy is really, really trying to price fix him at 49,000. So that is tragic. Um, if there was one on bid for under like, or if I could get in front of 30k, I probably would, but I'm not going to pay 40k for Maurice Lucas. So no investments going on right there. And then poor Zingis, keep my eye on him. He's up at 276, not paying that. I wanted to pay about 200k for him, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that. It looks like his price has gone sky high. Uh, what else have we got going on here? So we've got some uniforms that have come back, I believe, uh, that didn't actually sell. So I do need to go back and sell them. But yeah, other than that, we are just down to uh, the gold uniforms and then a couple of uh, other uniforms I actually like. So the magic ones, I've kept a couple of these silver ones because I actually like them. Might use them throughout the year. And then reward section, we actually do add in that ball, which is the first agenda ball we have got in so long. I don't remember how we got this purple marble ball, um, but we got that very early on because I've been running with that ball pretty much the entire year. So at least we did add in one card to our thingy. And then, oh yes, Dion Waiters, how could I forget? So finally, we got him to come out of the vault. Now, I don't know exactly how many games I've played since he was in the vault, but maybe like 50 games, something like that. So I know there's a lot of you guys out there who have played a significant amount more than I have. So let's take a look at his stats and then we'll go over to the Evo section and see 
just what it takes to get him up to the diamond level. So he's coming in with catch and shoot. He's coming in with relentless finisher, range extender, of course, and clamps, which is what makes him fantastic. He's got the contact finisher right there. He's got a quick first step. He has got green machine. He has got quick draw. It is a fantastic card. There are his evos to the amethyst level, which again, we'll go over in a sec. So 85 driving lap, 88 mid, 873, 85 driving dunk. He can speed boost. He's got the defense and he's got the speed already. So this card is fantastic. I've played against him a couple of times and I have been very, very impressed. So we'll just skirt past everyone else right there and we'll just focus straight on Dion Waiters. So 500 points, 53s, not too bad. A couple of games of Rookie Dom or a couple of challenges and he will be done. And then he goes up to a 94 driving lap, a 95 driving dunk. That is very nice. He gets three Hall of Fame badges, nothing crazy, um, but still better to have them than not. And then at the diamond level, this is when he becomes really nice because he gets Hall of Fame range extender and he gets a defensive boost and he gets a three-point boost as well. 92 three-point shot, 92 ball control, goes up to 89 perimeter D, 92 lateral quickness. And like I said, Hall of Fame range extender, that is big. So already at the ruby level, this card is really nice. So I think I probably will take him up to the diamond level. Will he be better than Isaiah Ryder? Probably yes, actually, at the uh, backup shooting guard position because Hall of Fame range extender is is a big, big badge to have, and he does have really, really nice animations as well. So yeah, very much impressed by getting him out of the vault. So happy that it finally happened. I didn't expect it to happen at all. Uh, I thought it might have been Giannis that was going to come out if I was going to get a player, but getting the Dion Waiters, I was very, very happy about. So moving on to another guy who I'm very happy about, and it is Jeremy Lin. So he is done already. He hasn't even been out a week, and we've already got him up to the 95 rated second diamond tier. So he's going to go up to Hall of Fame, Diamond, Quick First Step, Floor General, Acrobat, really, really nice badges. And then defensively, he's going to go up a little bit interiorly, which uh, doesn't really make any difference to anyone. Rebound goes up again, which doesn't make a difference, but his uh, mid-range goes up to 92, three-pointer goes up to an 88, which isn't bad, but the main thing is it puts us one level away from the pink diamond. So let's get him evoed up, and now we can actually compare him to Jason Kidd, who's also at this 95 rated diamond level so when we get him up to the pink diamond level because i say when because we are going to do it we've already made a start on this jason kid and if i'm going to do it on jason kid i'm definitely going to do it on jeremy lynn because he gets hall of fame range extender as well with hall of fame dead eye which is massive hall of fame clamps hall of fame catch and shoot and then speed and acceleration speed ball goes up to 94 ball handling to 92 three pointer to 92 it is an incredible card so very very happy with him so let's go ahead and just compare him to our Jason Kidd. So six foot three versus six foot four. Very, very similar right there. We have nine Hall of Fame badges for Jeremy Lin compared to five and 37 gold to 27 gold. So big differences in the badges. But in terms of the stats, we have got Jeremy Lin coming in with plus 29 draw foul. I didn't realize um, Jason Kidd's draw foul was so low. Why is it only 65? Um, driving dunk plus 20 for Jeremy Lin. Ball handling is actually in Jason Kidd's favor. So is all the passing and all of the defensive abilities as well, and speed as well. So Jason Kidd still looking really nice, even in comparison to Jeremy Lin, which is why I'm probably going to take both of them up to the pink diamond level and then kind of get a good feel of them at that level and then see who I actually want to play. But Jeremy Lin offensively, I feel, is a lot nicer. Jason Kidd's release isn't great, um, but now that I've got him up there, I'm very, very happy. And then, of course, Mark Gasol. We have been using him as well during those triple threat offline games last night. We weren't scoring with him. Obviously, we were just scoring with Jeremy Lin, but he was getting a couple of rebounds. Really wasn't getting many, but you can see he's up to nearly 200, which is good, and he's played 23 games. So hopefully, we will finish him at the right time. I don't want to have to play him for more games than necessary because obviously he has diamond. Contracts are expensive. And then Jason Kidd as well. He was in the squad for a little bit, just getting his games up and getting a couple of rebounds along the way. But yeah, Jeremy Lin, that is very, very exciting. And let's just have a quick little price check on Marcus Solsi, where he's selling at, at the pink diamond level. So he's still selling for over 100k, which is awesome. Uh, I'm fully expecting by the time that I've evoed him up, him to be selling for like 80k, something like that. But I'm happy with that. It's still going to be a lot of profit that we are going to be making, which is awesome. So let's go into the new cards that have dropped from last night. So last night there was a batch of five or six, I believe. And then today, like I said, we have got the new Chris Middleton, who is going to be the first player we look at. And he hasn't been released right yet. So we're not going to look at him. Uh, we will try and find some new players. So Trey Young did come out last night. 21 
Hall of Fame badges. Wow, I haven't seen the stats for any of these guys, so that is a shock. 21, that is incredible. Floor General, we've got Range Extender, Quick Draw, Dimer, um, Dead Eye Shooting is going to be incredible. Quick First Step as well. And then in terms of his gold badges, does he have clamps? I don't think he does. So defensively, not a great card, but offensively, you're going to have so much fun with this card. 94 driving layup, 93 mid, 95 three. Great ball control across the board. Really bad defense, not going to lie, but really good speed. So Trey Young, is he worth the, how much is he selling for right now? About 80k by the looks fit, 80-ish uh, k, maybe a bit under that. There's so many up on at the auction house. Um, but yeah, definitely not a card that I'll be rushing to try out because of that defense. Kyrie Irving got his second card of the year coming in at the pink diamond level. And he comes in with 15 Hall of Fame badges. Again, including quick first step, which is very nice. We have got contact finisher. We've got diamond down here. We've got floor general and range extender, of course, quick draw. Again, no defense. And it'll be interesting to see his stats. But 97 driving layup, great shooting across the board. 98 ball control. Again, defensively, that is horrendous. Well, if you get stuck on a mismatch, 28 interior D, that is bad. And speed isn't even top tier. You know, 89 speed, 93 acceleration. Not incredible in my opinion. So Kyrie, again, not a card that I'll be rushing to try out. None of these guys are new. We come over here, Donovan Mitchell's not new. Buddy Heal, now he is new. And he's actually got that I might look at picking up because, of course, we do have his... Amethyst card? Do we have his Amethyst card or do we have his Ruby card? Okay, we used to have his Amethyst card. We still do have his Ruby card uh, somewhere down here. I've got to go through all of my heat check cards. I've got so many goddamn heat check cards. Uh, eventually, we will get through all of these and we'll be able to see Buddy Healed somewhere. Uh, eventually, okay, here we go. Finally, do we have Buddy Healed at the Ruby level? We don't. We sold him. Did I really sell him? I don't remember selling him. Okay, looks like we sold him. Uh, 10 Hall of Fame badges on Buddy Heald, including some really nice shooting ones. He's got green, green Machine and Flexible Release. He's got Quick First Step. He's got Dead Eye. He's got Clamps. He's got Range Extender. So pretty much all of the big badges that you would like to see on a card. 94 Driving Lap, 95 Shooting, Mid-Range, and 3-Pointer. No dunking, but he can speed boost. 85 Primitive D, not bad, and 89 Speed and Acceleration. But, of course, Buddy Heald has a really, really nice release, as we know from his Ruby and his Amethyst card, and he is selling for so cheap um, that that is a really, really good budget shooting guard to add into your squad. AD's been out for ages, so has Luka Doncic. Uh, Brandon Ingham and Zion have been out for a while. Eric Gordon got a new card, 12 Hall of Fame badges on him, and he comes in with Volume Shooter, Green Machine, Flexible Release, Quick First Step, very nice. He's got Gold Clamps as well, Catch and Shoot, we've got Stop and Go, and Quick Draw and Range Extender. So really nice stats, incredible shooting, incredible driving, decent-ish dunking, he can speed boost, good defense, 84, and then really nice speeds. So Eric Gordon actually looking really nice. Westbrook, this is a new card, I believe. I think, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, let's take a look at Westbrook, 11 Hall of Fame badges, Quick First Step. We have got Contact Finisher, Dimer, Clamps, Intimidator, very nice. Rebound Chaser, of course, on Russell Westbrook. Floor General, 38 gold badges in total. Very nice indeed. And then Driving, of course, is going to be incredible. 90 Driving Dunk with the 97 Driving Layup. 94 Mid, 73 Ball, as you would expect. So not going to be great from the outside. So people will be able to sag off you and make it a little bit harder for you to score. Defensively, pretty good with the 83. And then 96 Speed and 90 Defensive Rebounding on Westbrook. So that is looking pretty damn nice. That's a Harden card. And then I think there's one more card, maybe. Yep, it was another Damian Lillard. So... We've already got a pink diamond. We've got three pink diamond Damian Lillards now. So this one had 24 gold and 18 Hall of Fame badges. And this one has 22 gold and 20 Hall of Fame badges. So very, very similar cards. If we take a look at this one, I believe it has gold clamps and the other one didn't. Uh, don't shoot me if I'm wrong with that, but I think that's my understanding. But this one comes in with range extender at Hall of Fame level, including floor general, dead eye, dimer, quick first step. Really, really nice for Damian Lillard. And I have heard that he's got really, really nice animations and really good uh, a jump shot as well, really nice and easy to green. So stats wise, very nice. 96 driving layup, 90 for the shooting, 95 driving dunk, 95 ball handling, uh, 84 perimeter D. Not incredible, not exceptional, but I think his offensive capabilities will make up for the fact that he's not the best on the defensive end. And they're going to have to do a lot. They're going to have to basically release a Damian Lillard with defense for this card to not be good. I mean, this is an incredible card. He's got clamps, so he's not going to be blown by on the defensive end. So that 84 perimeter D 
isn't going to be too much of a problem, but still looking like a really, really nice card. So let's jump into a game of Triple Threat offline, just to get these 40 tokens and the bonus 5,000 MT. And you can see there we get matched up with two Emerald cards with our two Diamond cards, because of course they do matchmaking based on the base level of the Evo cards. Of course, Jeremy Lin and uh, who was it? Jason Kidd both started life as Sapphire cards, so they get matched up as if they are Sapphires, which makes life on Triple Threat Offline so, so easy. And I think it might be the same for online as well. So as a little tip, if you're doing Triple Threat Online, if you want to get easier matchups or lower rated cards, uh, then just go in with Evo cards. And it's the same in My Team Unlimited as well. And I think a lot of people know about that. So it's not really too much of a tip. Um, but yeah, in here, all I'm doing, I'm playing with Marcus Gasol off ball. Obviously, he's got all the blocks he needs. He's got the 40 blocks that he needs. So uh, we are just using him to get as many rebounds as he can. But... Like I said, I don't really like his athleticism. It's really not very good. And this is the first time using Jeremy Lin at the second diamond level. He actually felt a lot slower right there than he did at the first diamond level, which makes absolutely no sense at all. He'd usually just blown straight by there, gone for the dunk animation, and slammed it down. So that was a bit strange. He does have the Hall of Fame quick first step now, so he should be a lot quicker. He just looks really sluggish. That's very strange. Uh, maybe the pink diamond level, he just becomes ridiculously quick, but... Yeah, and those first two possessions there is not feeling great. So let's jump into some comments. So Joseph Ramsey says, I sold my Gasol and Hidu. Is it a W or an L? I'd definitely say it's an L selling Hidu Turkaloo at any point in time. If you sell Hidu Turkaloo, it's going to be an L in my book. Oh, we don't want to pass that. Um, he is a fantastic card. I really, really do like him. I'm looking at buying him back. I'm checking every day to see if there is one uh, that has a diamond shoe and a diamond contract that I can pick up. As for selling Marc Gasol, um, I think it's probably an N, to be honest. Um, you might be able to get a little bit more of him if you waited and sold him off at a different time. Um, but... I don't think he's a great card, so I don't think his value is going to increase too much. Uh, and unless you are planning to Evo him up like I'm doing, selling him off and getting the MT is probably the best thing to do. So uh, into the next comment as the CPU just take the full shot clock and then they green it anyway. Um, as you'll see, I'm literally just going to camp in the paint with Marcus Sol. want to get as many rebounds with him as is possible. And then on the offensive end, it's just quick ISO, one quick crossover, and then straight to the rim and slam it down with Jeremy Lin. Next up. Hammer UK, to me, 2K should drop a unique. Thank you, Kobe Spotlight. Give him a starting as a low as you like, going up to the Galaxy Opal level with, say, all of the moments of his career, so, like, even to 20 to 25-point game. Don't worry about other cards. Just tribute Kobe this way for the 2K community. And, yeah, like I said in yesterday's video, I really, really do hope they release something for Kobe because, of course, the Amethyst and the Diamond cards are really, really high in price right now. So if Kobe fans do want to play with him, they're going to have to have a lot of MT to actually do that. So yeah, even if they gave out an Emerald card, Emerald Evo card, something like that, even if it only goes up to the Diamond or Pink Diamond level, I think everyone would be so grateful and really, really appreciative for having that opportunity to actually play with a Kobe card, uh, especially obviously given the circumstances that has happened this week. So uh, I think we should hear something from 2K in the next couple of days about that, um, but whether or not they actually follow through with it is going to be another matter. So next up into the comments we go... We have got one from Chance Cobb who says, I'm pretty sure Nick Nurse allows Gasol to have the glass cleaning takeover. And I think someone else said that in the comments as well. So definitely going to look at picking up Nick Nurse because, yeah, getting this guy the glass cleaning takeover will make it a little bit easier. Of course, we can go into challenges and just go solely for rebounds. If we need to do that, I definitely will. Uh, and finally, the CPU miss. Because, uh, yeah, I remember back when we were evoing up the Joe Smith and he needed 900 rebounds. He got he got the glass cleaning takeover. Okay, Malcolm Brogdon is not going to be easy to blow by. So we'll call for the screen in the corner. They back off. We take the shot and we actually make the shot. But, of course, it's not green because it's me. Um, when we were doing the Joe Smith card, we were getting like 50, 60 rebounds per game. Uh, obviously, he was a lot more athletic than Marc Gasol is. So it was probably a lot easier to get them with him. But it's still not going to be a bad idea. And Jeremy Lin is on fire now, which is very nice. He comes in for the layup and blows it. Are you serious? It was only Terry Porter and he's barely there. Uh, yeah, not really impressed at that with Jeremy Lin, not going to lie. Uh, and then William says, looks like Jeremy Lin uh, is going to be a very nice and easy Evo, which he is. Do you think the following spotlight Evos will be as easy to Evo as Jeremy Lin is? I definitely think they will be. Um, I think they have realised just how hard some of the previous Evos are. They'll obviously have all the analytics. They'll be able to see how many people took people like Dwight Howard or the Isaiah Thomas or the Andre Iguodala up to the pink diamond level. Uh, and I would guess that it's not many people at all that actually took those guys all the way. Uh, and I think they will be seeing the data from this Jeremy Lin and seeing that a lot more people are doing it. Obviously, it means a lot more people have pink diamond cards, but that's not a bad thing. We're still having to put in a lot of work 
into actually doing these cards. So yeah, I definitely think they will follow the trend and keep it nice and easy, which is awesome. Next up, Dingo it says, what's a good 600k squad? For 600k, you can get a very good squad. Um, you're looking at getting probably that new diamond, a uh, pink diamond Damian Lillard at the point guard position. We'll say about 100k for him. At the shooting guard position, uh, probably the diamond Jimmy Butler. That is a really nice card. Again, not too expensive either. At the three, you want to rock with Diamond Hidu Turklu or Diamond Lamar Odom. I'd have those at the three and the four. And then at the center position, I'd have Pink Diamond Hakeem. And that should take you to about 500, 600K, I imagine. Because Hakeem is a little bit expensive still, coming in at around 200K. So yeah, that is a little squad that I'd make just off the top of my head right there. Uh, and as we finish that game, nice and easy. Hopefully we get the vault to open. That would be really cool. Will Jones, do you think they will ever add another Amethyst to the token market? I have over 200 tokens and I've been waiting for them to drop some new Amethyst so I can and spend my tokens on something useful i definitely think they will they definitely should and they definitely did last year so if you can wait until mid-february or late february when they update the token market again i would say wait if you're not too fast uh, if your team is already past the amethyst stage i'd say just go on to the diamond level and pick up some diamonds obviously the new diamonds they dropped are useful all of the other diamonds, not so much. Um, but yeah in terms of the amethyst we should get a couple of new ones and they should be pretty nice so we just got the 40 tokens, very good, and we got the 5,000 MT as a bonus, which is great. And I didn't actually look at Jeremy Lin's Evo, so we need 600 po 1,600 points, 600 points would be so nice, 1,600 points, 800 assists, 103, 60 games. So it's pretty much the same as Jason Kidd, but he needs to make 100 threes instead of 100 rebounds, which is a lot easier. Uh, he needs to get 800 assists instead of 900, and then 1,600 points instead of 1,900. So a little bit easier, not crazy easier, but still definitely easier, and in my opinion, going to be a better card when he is fully evo So let's get on to the last couple of comments. Joe Morty, why do you do the ch weekly challenges? Uh, just because I prefer doing them than going into rookie domination. Obviously, for these, you actually get MT awards as a... Uh, as well as the match coins. So you do get sort of like 2,000 to 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 MT for these games. And then at the end of it, you get six tokens. So you're actually earning towards something or you're playing towards earning something rather than rookie domination where you are just solely playing for Evo up the card. So that is why I do them. I don't go out of my way to do them. If I've got a card that I need to Evo, that is why I would go in to do them. Splashy says, who is a good small forward for around 100K? I already have Lamar Odom was thinking of James Worthy. Uh, James Worthy, not the best card, I would say. Um, who do I have in my squad at the moment? I've got Richard Jefferson and Paul Millsap, so both untradeable. Um, again, I would say Hidu Turklu. I recommend him every video, it seems like, to so many people, but that's because he's so good. I actually love that card. Um, and other than that, there's not really any small forwards I've looked at picking up this year. Diamond Jimmy Butler is a good card that you could use there, definitely. And then moving on, Lisa Ruth says, I'm at the 16th challenge and I have everyone, including Melo, but not enough MT for Kawhi. So let's take a quick little price check on these two guys right here. 150k for Kawhi and probably under 200k for Melo. Yeah, about 200k for Melo. So uh, if you do a couple of Evos, if you just Evo up Marc Gasol, obviously it'd take a while, but that would pay single-handedly for your Kawhi. And of course, along doing that, you can get through some challenges as well. Trenton says 2K should do a spotlight. Kobe honoring him by allowing us to play some of his historic and amazing moments he had in his NBA career. The Evo will go to an Opal or Pink Diamond. It doesn't matter, but something like that would be amazing. That's exactly what I said earlier on in the video, and I totally agree with you right there. Peter says, I have Nick Nurse as my coach, and he gives Gasol glass cleaning takeover. So yeah, we definitely need to go ahead and buy Nick Nurse. So let's take a look at where are we nick nurse he is a diamond coach i believe yeah he is uh and he is pretty nice and cheap actually coming in at about 6000 mt so i'll definitely go ahead and pick him up if not on buy now we'll definitely look at getting one of those on the bid so brad stevens is the cheapest would he do the same job as nick nurse i think he probably would uh because he does give the same boost because they're both defensive coaches so we'll go for brad stevens just because he is the cheapest out of the two but i appreciate that um who are we say talking about uh, Nick Nurse would do the same job. So we'll go ahead and just chuck in uh, where are we coaching and then we'll put Brad Stevens in there and then Marc Gasol gets plus five to the defensive rebounding and plus five to the offensive rebounding as well, which is very nice indeed. Right, next up, Mick says, you're going to need a third point guard. The one and only problem with Stefan Marbury is his stamina. It's awful and it's somewhere down in the 80s. So that is not something that I had thought of. <laughs> Obviously, we don't have the card yet, so it hasn't come to me as a problem just yet. Jeremy Lin comes in with 95 stamina, 
uh, which is, of course, very impressive. And then Jason Kidd comes in with, I imagine it's some of the same. So, yeah, 98 stamina. So, stuff, Seven Marbury coming with about 80. Not great, I have to say, but if the rest of the card is fantastic, and I can't complain too much. God Antetokounmpo says, I have won 300 games of Triple Threat offline and still don't have Dion Waiters, although I did get Giannis. So, I feel a little bit bad that I've actually got Waiters now because I have not played 300 games since this vault came into uh, play. Like I said, I probably played maybe 50 games, maybe even that is too much, but we did play the 20 games during that two-hour span of the event being on yesterday, and I definitely do think during events that the uh, vault odds are boosted, because yeah, like I said, we've got the diamond pack, we've got the 10 tokens, we've got the Dion waiters, and we've got the one token a couple of times as well, so I definitely think during events that is the best time to play that game mode. Next up, Diego says, I pulled Diamond Giannis from the vault, should I sell or keep him? Let's take a quick look at the price of Diamond Giannis. I would say sell him before looking at his price, as it is this one that is in the vault. So looking at about 50k by the looks of it, definitely, definitely sell him. Getting 50k for him is a massive, massive W. And it's not a great card, to be fair. You can get a lot better cards uh, for the price. You can spend a little bit more and get the moments of the week Giannis, which is better anyway. Or you could go ahead and buy Lamar Odom or that guy, Healy Turkley, of course. Uh, so yeah, definitely sell him. Um, but still, well done on getting him out of the vault. Next up, Ben McRoberts says, Yo, JD, could you explain what price fixing is? I always hear you and DBG talking about it. So, a prime example of that is this Maurice Lucas card down here. So, obviously, with the Nate Thurmond, there is literally only like under 10 of him up. So, nobody's price fixing him. But, with this Maurice Lucas, you will see so many of them listed at the same price at the same time, and it is someone just trying to manipulate the price. So this guy right here is listed them all at 14 hours, 35 minutes, uh, and they're all at around the same price, 49,500 MT. So he has clearly, since the uh, card came out, just been buying all of them up, and then he lists them all up at the same time. He's obviously got another batch here at about 43,000 MT because he's realized his ones at 49,000 aren't selling. And it's just one person who has stocked up all of them, trying to manipulate the market, trying to make sure his are the cheapest out there, but they are still inflated in value. So he would have bought them for cheaper than this, I imagine. If not, he's really bad. But you can see how far we are going here. And the uh, little white icon is just updated. And this could go on for another long while. So... That is what price fixing is basically, just buying up all of one card and trying to manipulate the market by having your uh, being the only one with them out on the market. Marcus Carenti says, how do you find so much time to Evo big cards? I tried to do Bob McAdoo when the game came out, but I just gave up. It was too much. Yeah, definitely give up on Bob McAdoo. He is not worth it. Um, yeah, I don't really do well with Evos. I mean, you can see we've made a little bit of progress on Marcus Hall, but not much really. And that is just doing the spotlight challenges. After the spotlights are done, I'll probably jump into the weekly challenges, get through some of them. And then after that, then I'll probably will slow down a little bit because like I said, I don't really enjoy going into rookie domination. Adam Kandov says, I think Friday will be Kobe packs like last year or a Shaq Prime set. A Shaq set would be brilliant. We are owed a Shaq card. And obviously they could do a Kobe card at the same time. But like I said, I really do hope it is either a raw card, a locker code or an Evo card or uh, a challenge reward, something like that. Just something that isn't just he is in packs. That is what I think uh, it should be. Joshua Dawson says, I've reached 1,750 cards and have 450k. Should I sell my stuff? I'm not going to go all the way to AD. Um, yeah, I would say sell your stuff. I don't think it's really worth all the stress and the buying every card meticulously for a good price to get to this 100k. Hitting the 1,750 cards, getting the 300 tokens, I would say cash out there. Um, I don't think you need to force it. I think I had a lot more than 450k. It costs a lot more than that to get between these levels here. Yeah, definitely cash out. There's no point going any further. You've hit the good rewards, and after that, it just becomes very, very expensive. Next up, Liquid Ocelot says, 2k should give a Pink Diamond Kobe Evo card that goes up to a Galaxy Opal and requirements to be to drop 81 points. So yeah, if they did something like that, it would be fantastic. I think we all are in agreement that a Kobe Evo card would be fantastic and really, really would make everyone in the 2k community so, so happy. Uh, next up, we have I Iisty, who says, my team is Pink Diamond, Dame, Zach Levine, Brandon Ingram, Giannis, and Serge Ibaka. Opal, what should I do to upgrade it? Upgrade it. I have 200k and need help. So... Uh, it's a very solid team, but Opal Serge Ibaka, I don't think he's that good. If you're looking to spend that 200k on one position, I'd say go out and get the pink diamond Hakeem. I think he is better than Serge Ibaka. Tristan Yonsei says, uh, my budget is 275,000 MT. What card should I buy? By the way, you are fav my favorite YouTuber and I look up to you. So thank you very much for that, Tristan. If you've got 275,000 thousand mt to spend lamar odom should be one of your first purchases he is fantastic i think buying that new pink diamond damian lillard is going to be a massive w and if you're looking for cheap players miles turner and barnyani are fantastic other than that 
going to recommend him again. He do Turkoglu. Buy him if you can. Jaron Jackson Jr. Also, the Amethyst or the Diamond card is a very, very nice card. And at the same position, uh, the Diamond hit Carl Anthony Towns or Embiid are both very nice cards as well. And we move on to the final couple of comments. Joshua Duffin, is Rick Barry any good and is he worth it? He's all right. Is he worth it? He's worth it to get the Galaxy Opal Brandon Roy, basically. You need him, obviously, to complete Brandon Roy, so he's worth it in that regard. And then you leave another comment saying, best small forward for under 200k, Lamar Odom. And then Sean Goods comes in and says, a pink diamond, Marc Gasol is better than Hakeem, better release and an inch taller. So that's very interesting because, in my opinion, when I used that Hakeem, he was so athletic, he was so fast, his vertical was fantastic, and that is not what I've seen at all from Marc Gasol. But I might change my mind when I get to the pink diamond level. Daniel Williams, a good challenge to get for three pointers, points and assists and rebounds, is game 16 on the Dwight Spotlight Challenge. Seven minute quarters on rookie difficulty. So yeah, that is a very, very good tip. But I should be able to get 48 threes in one domination game. Um, but seven minute quarters on rookie difficulty is, of course, fantastic for evoing up cards. And then we come to the final couple today. Curse Soul, did you switch to a hardwired connection just yet? Because you should. I know I should. My releases are so bad online, but not yet. But I am looking into getting it done. And then Johnny Massa, final comment of the day, says Diamond Marc Gasol is easy to change his takeover. He can be sharp shooting, rim protecting, glass cleaning, post scoring. I made him rim protector, best 3 and D big in the game. So very interesting to see a lot of people rating this guy so highly. Like I say, I'll see how he plays with the glass cleaning takeover. Um, obviously, I have just been basically focusing on playing with him, using him for rebounds. So if he's a little bit better with that, with the glass cleaning takeover, then my opinion may change. So that is going to be it for today's video. A lot going on. We've got the Dion Waiters. We've got Jeremy Lin up to the 95 rated diamond level, which is awesome. So yeah, very exciting times to come. And of course, we've got to play those final three spotlight challenges. And then we're going to be adding Seth Marbury and Galactic Opal Brandon Roy. So this week is just ridiculous. So much going on. And like, he's, uh, like I've been saying, like you guys are saying, hopefully this Friday we get some sort of Kobe card to remember him by. So that is going to be it for today's video. As usual, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.